This video on Easy Lobby SVM 10.5 demonstrates how to install and configure eAdvance. Before installing eAdvance, check that Internet Information Services is turned on. Navigate to Control Panel, Programs and Features, turn Windows Features on or off. Check the IIS box if it is blank. Expand IIS and World Wide Web Services, and then Application Development Features. Check the latest version of ASP.NET. Several other features will be checked automatically. Click OK. Then, click Close when the changes have been completed. Return to all control panel items and then select Administrative Tools. As IIS is turned on, Internet Information Services Manager is available, which we will use to configure the eAdvance website after the eAdvance installation. Minimize administrative tools and close the control panel. eAdvance can be installed from the Easy Lobby disk or from a downloadable executable file. Enter your eAdvance license key and click OK. Click Next, Next again, and accept the license agreement. Choose an installation directory if the default path is not being used. Click Next and Next again to start the installation. Click Finish. Now the files needed to run the eAdvance website are installed. Bring up Administrative Tools and launch the Internet Information Services Manager. Expand the server tree and then Sites. Click on Default Website. The first step is to point the default website to the folder where the eAdvance files have been installed. Click Basic Settings and browse to the eAdvance installation folder. In this case, the default C Program Files x86 Easy Lobby eAdvance Server 10. Click OK and OK. Now the default website is pointing to the eAdvance files. The next thing to do is ensure the website default document is the default.aspx page. Double click on the default document icon and select default.aspx. Click Move Up and Yes in the dialog box. Then keep clicking Move Up until the default.aspx file is at the top of the list. If using a 64-bit operating system, 32-bit application pooling should be enabled as eAdvance is a 32-bit application. Select Application Pools, Default App Pool, and Advanced Settings. Ensure Enable 32-bit applications is set to true. Click OK. Navigate to the eAdvance installation folder. See Program Files x86 Easy Lobby. Right-click on the eAdvance Server 10 folder. Go to Properties, select the Security tab and click Edit. The IIS underscore iUsers group should be added and given full control over the folder. Click Add. 
We are only interested in accounts on the server, so ensure that locations is set to the server name. Click Advanced. And find now to see a list of accounts on the server. Locate and select IIS underscore iUsers. Click OK and OK on the next dialog. Give the group full control and give the users group modify permissions. Click OK and OK on the next dialog. Now that the backend configuration has been completed, the default website should be restarted in IIS Manager to ensure the configuration changes are applied. Open a web browser and enter the server name, the server IP address, a loopback address such as 127.0.0.1 or simply localhost. Hit enter. There will be a short delay when the website is initialized for the first time, but future requests will be much faster. A login screen is displayed which will connect to the default sample database. We need to log in to configure the connection to the EasyLobby SQL database. Log in with username Sally Aston, there is no password, and click submit. Go to admin, product config. Select the Data tab. On the Database Type drop-down menu, select Microsoft SQL Server. Enter the server name. The login name and password fields will need to be changed if the database has been set up with non-default credentials. Click Save Changes and then OK. Now we are logged out and you may see a message stating could not enroll station followed by the eAdvance license key. This is because a new station has to be created for eAdvance using EasyLobby SVM or administrator. If the message is displayed, copy the license key from it to use in the next step when creating the station in SVM. Launch EasyLobby SVM. Log in as an administrator, the default password is PASS. Navigate to Edit – Stations. Click New to add a station. Call it eAdvance. Enter the license key in the CD key field. From the application drop-down menu, choose eAdvance and click Close. Now that eAdvance is pointing to the SQL Server database rather than the default sample database, we need to ensure we still have administrative privileges for eAdvance, as the Sally Aston admin account only existed in the default sample database. Navigate to Employee, Lookup, Active Employees. We want to make sure that the employee in the SQL database, Sample Employee, has administrative rights. Open the employee's record by double-clicking. Select the eAdvance tab. From the Security field drop-down menu, select Administrator. This will give administrator privilege when we are logged into eAdvance. Click Save and then Close. Now log in to eAdvance, which will be connecting to the SQL Server database. The username is Sample Employee with no password. Click Submit. Now that we are logged in as an administrator, we can perform any further configuration that may be required. 
That completes this video on eAdvance installation and configuration.